My name is Olusegun Mokolu. Non-disclosure of death and sickness in the church. There is a phenomenon that is becoming worrisome in the body of Christ, at least particularly within this environment where I live, uh, which is that, you know, when a pastor is sick or a pastor's wife is sick or a pastor's child, it is hidden. And then if the person eventually dies, they, we don't know the cause of death. Now, you might say, well, they are private people and they are entitled to their privacy. I want to say to you, we are members of the body of Christ. And once you accepted that call, you have certain responsibility to other people. You see, when a man of God dies, particularly those who are popular, and the death, the, the cause of death is not disclosed, it gives room for manipulation, for secrecy, and um, it creates a lot of doubt in the heart of the people. Why are we doing it? There is no need. We all fall sick at some point. This year, 2021, I've been rushed to the hospital. 2021. I'm a preacher of the word of God. <laughs> I don't pray to be, to be sick. I believe I'm healed in Christ. But I've been rushed to the hospital. I remember some time, some years back, I was in the hospital on admission and one of my Bible students came to see me and I said, can you see that I'm ordinary? Can you see that I'm just like you? In fact, somehow I was happy that they could see me in that state because I don't want them to esteem me above that which I am. We are all what we are by the grace of God. There is no point making things secretive. Let's be open. He died of cancer. Yes, he died of cancer. You can't help God. Do you think by covering it and people not knowing that he died of cancer, you are helping God? No, God is able to help himself. If God doesn't want him to die of cancer, he will not die of cancer. If God doesn't want him to die of COVID, he won't die of COVID. There is no need to hide it. That's what killed him. That's what killed him. You see, what is most important to us is that our inner life is in communion with Jesus. And when we die, that life goes back to Jesus. The, did you know the Bible actually says our outward, appear, our outward body, though may perish, there is a far great um, glory on the inside. So though this outward body is perishing, the inward life is in great glory. You know, there was a time Paul wrote and said, God delivered me from tears. He said, because this his co-laborer could have died. That was Paul writing. That's a man that his anchor chief could go and heal people. Yet, he had a servant, a co-laborer with him, who was sick to the point of death. He said, he was sick near death. But God delivered me from tears. So Paul too was going to... In fact, he said from, from tears upon tears. He has been having tears. That was Paul. You know, because when you create this larger than life picture for yourself, you run into problem. When you tell people that you cannot fall sick, your child cannot fall sick, your wife cannot fall sick, who told you all of that? That's, that's not even a correct biblical doctrine. You see, that's why it's, it's better you teach people correctly and not just exercise faith and turn faith to a doctrine. What exactly is the biblical teaching about our health? What is the complete teaching about our health? Why was Timothy having uh, in, uh, uh, infirmity? And Paul said, because of your infirmity, drink a little wine. Why couldn't Paul just simply say be healed? Why? 
We could still fall sick. That is the reality. This human body is still weak. This body will perish one day. It will eventually succumb. No matter what you do to this body, it will succumb. It is true that the power of the resurrection of Jesus strengthen us to do things. Eventually, this body will succumb until we receive the, the everlasting body, the one that Jesus has on him now. We will also be like him and we will receive this body. So why, why are you pretending? You know, that's why when, a, when you see a young preacher preaching and say, I cannot be poor. I, the day is broke. He will be hiding it and be begging people secretly. He will turn ministry to a means of money because he wants to keep proving to people that he's not broke. I've seen a man preaching in one of these popular churches. Somebody I know very well how the, 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 the family ran and did everything to gather something for him. They, they were as poor as church rats. And he was preaching and I happened to see the video one day and he said, We've never lacked food in my house. We've never lacked. That. See, how does even that in itself be, be anything? Paul said, I've learned how to abase and how to abound. There will be days of lack. There will be days of provision. But I know him personally. And I know what is going on on the ground. And he's out there lying to people. What kind of, why are you creating false impression? Who told you that your Christian life he is going to be respected because you say you cannot be sick, you cannot be poor. You can Who told you? Jesus told the church in Revelation. He said, I know your poverty. That was Jesus. He said, but you are not poor. Because for Jesus, lack, human kind of poverty is not poverty to him. So when you do when we don't when we are not sound on scriptures, we will just put ourselves in, in a lot of mess. Why are we covering debt? If, if it is possible, we will, we will almost say some people have not died. Did you know that all these, all these demonic religions out there, they create an impression that their founders are not dead? So you, why are you hiding death as a Christian? We all saw Jesus die on the cross. That was a miracle maker. They mocked him. They said he delivered others, others. himself he cannot deliver. Because he was fulfilling the purpose of God. So you are afraid that people may say that to you. That he has been healing people. He cannot heal his own son. He cannot heal himself. He cannot heal this. Oh, he has been happy. He has been praying for people. God has been giving them money. But he is poor. You see? You, are, you care about what people will say. Are you serving people or are you serving God? Your integrity is in God's hand. It's not in you. It is God to prove to people that he calls me. If he likes, let him not prove it. It is not for me to prove anything. I will speak and say what he asks me to say. So it, it doesn't matter what people say of me. So the fact that I'm suffering or I'm sick, does, what does it change with God? I am not the proof for God. <laughs> he is more than able to prove himself. The God that I am serving anyway. So please, brethren, why are we hiding all these things? Why are we creating secrecy around death? Some churches, they don't announce death. They are deceiving themselves. <laughs> they want to give the impression that they are always happy. I said even the founder will die. What will they now do? Will they not announce it also? They will even put it on live TV. Why do we love deceiving ourselves? I pray none of you have cancer. I pray none of you fall sick. But if something happens, you fall sick and die. What is most important is that make heaven. We will all eventually die. Make heaven, make eternity with Jesus. That is what is most important. I believe that, I believe that um, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. It does not matter how I feel in my body. I believe it sincerely. But occasionally, I do feel some pains. <laughs> and there are times when I still take Panadol. Or whatever my wife says I should take. And I'm born again. I'm born again. <laughs> So, brethren, let's be careful. Let's not create secrecy with these things. What are we hiding? You know, the church is becoming a secret place. Even some believers will fall sick. They find it difficult to tell other believers that, pray for me, I'm sick. What, 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 what is the problem? If they didn't raise voice for Peter, 
Could Peter not have been killed? When I was in the hospital, I sent notice out to some brethren. I'm in the hospital, oh, please pray for me. Because I couldn't pray. When you fall sick, you can't pray. Let other people pray for you. The Bible says, if any is sick among you, that means any can be sick amongst us. So why are you creating impression as if you can never fall sick? You can never do this. You are just creating a force larger than life. Our life is hidden in Christ Jesus. It's not in those things that you are taking. Some of these preachers, they will go abroad and do complete medical checkup. They will fix their body. And then they will come back and say they have never fallen sick. They have always been strong. There is nobody that is always strong. Nobody. Even Jesus got tired. Why did he sleep? He slept so much that wave was blowing. My father was sleeping. <laughs> he was sleeping. This body, this human body, it will succumb one day. What is most important is that your soul is saved. Your name is written in the book of life. That you never experience the second death. That is what is most critical. Why are we hiding things? Why are we creating larger than life image? We are all brethren. That's the truth. We are all brethren in the end. We are all brethren, my dear brothers and sisters. Let's stop this secrecy. Let's help one another. You know, do you know that at times other people's faith are even strengthened knowing that ah, their pastor is sick because they are thinking that you are God. Now, when they know that you too, you have failings, they say, okay, so after all, their life is okay. So the fact that they have these challenges doesn't mean anything is wrong with them. But when you create a, a, a larger than life image for yourself, they are looking at you, they are like, how can, how is their own pastor life different from them? And you are just lying, you are just deceiving them. Am I saying we don't have faith for, for perfect health, for healing? No, I have the faith. Maybe you have it more than me. Hey, oh, fine, great, I, I appreciate God for that. I pray to God to take me to that level. But I'm not going to lie to tell you um, uh, what, what I don't know. Like I said, about two months ago, I was still rushed to the hospital at 2 a.m. I'm a child of God. <laughs> that doesn't change anything in the fact that I am a child of God. And if you are sick, I can pray for you. And I believe God will heal you. So brethren, please, you remember um, Elisha? Elisha fell sick. He that's the man that asked for double portion anointing. He fell sick and died. A dead man was thrown into his grave and that man came alive. Elisha didn't use God's grace to heal himself. Those are genuine men of God. He didn't use God's power to keep himself alive. If some of you have those kind of anointing, you, don't, you will not want to die. You will keep yourself alive forever. But he left it to God. If God wants to heal him, let him heal him. But if God wants to use that to take him home, so be it. We don't need this kind of secrecy in the church of Jesus. When we are sick, we are sick. When people die, they die. If they ask, how did he die? Yeah, well, we, we heard that this was why he died. It changes nothing. If you feel you, you still have right to your privacy, it's all right. But consider the church far more than your small family circle. Consider the implication of what you are doing and be genuine in your heart that the reason you are doing this is just at family level. It's not to hide anything from church. It's not to create any wrong impression to God's people. Be very careful. My name is Olu Shegumoku Olu. My contact details... They are in the description below. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with his church. God bless you.